what I hold in this box, you already know what it is because you've read the title, but I have waited over a year for this stupid thing. And all I can say is it better be worth it. What's up everybody, Graver here, and yes, this is finally arrived, the Nerf Limited Hasbro Aliens Crossover, the M41A Pulse Rifle from the movie Aliens in Nerf form. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do an unboxing, because even though I do, you know, I do reviews of new products, I never really do unboxings, but let's just go to the bench and take a look at everything first. Okay, so normally I wouldn't be doing a unboxing uh, for reviews, but this just, it, it needed its own. So we're going to take a look at the packaging that the Nerf Limited Aliens crossover, whatever, but this is the m 41 a pulse rifle that I have waited over a year to get. So now full disclosure. Yes, I have opened this already. Um, but just to make sure I had everything at work and all that kind of stuff. But this is so good. So it does say here that it is plastic free packaging except for tape and glue. So, you know, um, yay whatever so we slide this off and then we look at the box art which is so uh, one is really nice you have the nerf limited logo here you have the m41a over here um you also have down on here which makes it look like an actual weapons case along with lv426 which is where the movie actually takes place because that's where they found everything in the first movie um on the back, you also have uh, the full name of it, the Armat M41A, uh, the Nerf Limited logo again here, the stamp, Wayland Yutani uh, ID um, identification uh, tag on it, um, along with technically what it comes with, which is the blaster, the darts, and then the mega darts. So. Also, the one thing I love on the front here is they have these little cutouts of where alien blood, like, kind of splashed on it. It's just, honestly, it's a very nice touch, and this is just me being old for a hot second. But I remember back in the day that there was a Marvel Presents Wolverine comic, and it was done up as a file folder. However, Wolverine had his cloth marks across it and it was actually a hardcover like kind of like a thicker not cardboard but like a thicker paper so you could actually see that it had like the cutouts in it and all that stuff. it was really okay i'm rambling let's just open this and see what we get so on the inside you get more because you have like kind of like a schematic of it and of course you have the alien acid burns uh it looks like somebody like all of us have tried to peel the sticker and it's just the paper ripping off, which I love. Um, the Colonial Marine logo, which I believe that is what that is. And then you have the uh, the patch for the Sulaco, which is the ship that brought them, the Marines and Ripley to LV-426. I, I'll be honest, Aliens is one of my favorite action movies of all time, so I'm just really enjoying this right now so and then you take this piece off and then you have the blaster which i must say is absolutely beautiful and it was worth the wait <laughs> i'll say that much um besides the blaster itself which we will go over very very shortly we also have um, 
the rest of the box, which there isn't anything else in these spots here. However, there's a little piece of tape here, which I've already cut, which you can see here, uh, 10 darts, three darts, which is the ammo. And then you flip that open. And then we have our darts in uh, tissue paper. And, oh my God. Okay. Now we all know that elite darts are hot garbage, but oh man, those darts look dope. I love them. Those darts look dope. I, I, I am very excited about that. Very excited. Uh, then we have the instructions for it, but you know, real nerfers don't look at instructions. And then we have the mega darts, which, oh, they're AccuStrike darts. Oh, that's the, that's nice. That's, okay, so there we have that. We have that. And then we have the blaster, which now we're going to go back to the normal part of the review. I just wanted to do an actual unboxing and, you know, just, oh my God, I love this thing. All right. So, yeah. And here we have it. Uh, the USCM standard issue Armat M41A pulse rifle in all of its glory. Uh, now, as always, with any of my reviews, uh, regardless of how excited I am to review this, uh, we are going to go over the aesthetics of the blaster, see how it works, uh, some of the fun features that this actually does have. Uh, we'll go to the workbench, open this up, because yes, I am going to open it up. Uh, I'll get some chrono numbers for you guys, and then I will give you my final thoughts on this thing. So, what we have here is a one-to-one -one scale sized replica um, of the pulse rifle used in the movie Aliens. Now, aesthetically, obviously, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but we'll get into that momentarily. Um, but a little brief history lesson of what went into the making of this uh, beautiful and iconic weapon uh this was actually a combination of two weapons uh done up with a bunch of futuristic um accoutrements uh this is a m1a1 thompson submachine gun yes a tommy gun along with a remington 870 shotgun that was extremely cut down to fit on here uh there was also i believe uh some spaz 12 um furniture that was used um alongside the remington uh but yes then it was all done up uh by an armorer in england and i forget who exactly i'll put it down here below uh came up with the shroud and everything to give you this wonderful beauty now in movie this is supposed to fire 10 millimeter caseless armor piercing ammunition with a pump action 30 millimeter grenade launcher mounted underneath the barrel here along with that this thing is also supposed to have a this is also supposed to have a magazine capacity of 99 rounds however the marines only load 95 because they don't want to jam up but <laughs> just fun little tidbit uh and thank you uh internet movie firearm database for that information um now this However, um, I want to say it's a rapid strike reshell. Uh, this does fire in full auto. It does have a pusher mech built into it rather than the conveyor belts that the more recent full auto blasters have used. Uh, it only holds 10 darts, unfortunately, uh, but it does have a functional master key up front here that does fire mega darts. Uh, looking at the paint scheme that is done on this, uh, the theme is done after the power loaders in the movie. Um, they're first seen in the dropship prep uh, montage, or scene, not really montage, it's more of a scene. But while the uh, Marines are prepping their dropship, it is first seen kind of in the background moving a bunch of heavy stuff. Basically, a power, a power loader is a glorified forklift mech suit. Which, don't get me wrong, is still freaking awesome. Um, but it's more m 
memorable scenes in the movie come at the end of the movie where spoiler alert if you haven't seen this yet and if you haven't shame on you uh but it's more famously known for at the end of the movie when ripley gets into one and just beats ass on the alien queen on the sulaco from her you bitch now one last little fun fact about the aesthetics of this going into if you want to paint yours up i will be doing mine come warmer weather in the spring uh but if you want to go for a pure prop accuracy this is not actually od green this was actually painted up in a paint called brown bess the lights that were used on set and once transferred to f and once on film actually caused a discoloration, making the rifles actually look black and OD green, but they're not. They're actually black and brown. So just a little bit of, you know, something to chew on in the back of your head when you're, you know, thinking about doing what you want to do with it, this. Do you want to go for screen accuracy or do you want to go for prop accuracy? So if you go for screen accuracy, OD green is fine. If you're going for prop accuracy, you're going to want to get your hands on some brown bests. Yeah, brown bests, yeah. Um, and also, what the, it even breaks out like nicely in the blaster in and of itself. Uh, everything that is white on the blaster would actually be black in the prop version of it. And everything that is yellow would be either the brown best or the OD green, however you want to go about it. Um, so now that we've gone over a lot of the aesthetics and a bit of history on this thing, let's go over how this thing actually works. So as with any flywheel blaster, uh, you have a rev trigger under here. And I got to say, I appreciate how they kept it very low profile with um, regards to the aesthetics of the blaster itself. But yes, you would hold down the trigger. Pull the trigger, and this also does actually, and you'd fire a dart. Holding it down, you fire in full auto. This also does have sound effects. I forgot to mention that earlier. So anytime you pull one of the triggers, you'll either get a from the shotgun or from the back end of the rifle, you'll get. And those are, it's hard to hear it over the flywheels, which I'm slightly disappointed in, but I was listening very closely uh, to this, and it actually is the proper sound effect. Granted, it's a little muffled from the speaker, but it is the sound effect of the pulse rifle firing from the movie. So, on that. Now, you will also notice on here, there's a bit of a counter. And yes, this is a functional counter, just like in the movie. Uh, you set it by using either this to raise your uh, count or the bottom button to lower the count. Now, once you hit, and going back to function, like the uh, sound effects and everything, um, I'm just going to fire it down to 10, and I want you to hear this because it's actually really kind of a nice little thing. When you're out of darts, it actually clicks like you are out of ammo, which is, I'm sorry, I find that highly amusing. Um, in order to reset the counter, all you have to do is pull out your magazine, put it back in, and it resets it to whatever count you had in there. So while this is a 10 round clip, I can raise this up to 15, drop my magazine, put in a new one, and it goes back to the 15. So there is that, and that is actually pretty cool. Now, actually, I'll wait and do that later. Um, so the front end of this is, as I mentioned, a master key. Uh, it's more akin to a long shot than what we would consider a master key. Um, it's single shot, which I have to say that I'm a little disappointed on. 
you could have had this go back way further and actually done like a two shot or like a two shot Magnus clip in here or something. Uh, at least I feel like it could have been done. But you prime this back, slide it forward. If you have a dart in here, it would fire, but I don't. But and you also get the grenade launcher sound. I don't know how screen accurate that is because surprisingly enough, the grenade launcher wasn't used very often except for, again, the end of the move, towards the end of the movie. Like when the Marines first go in, they never really use it. I mean, they fire the guns, but they don't use the grenade launchers. Um, also, just a few little aesthetic changes and all that stuff. Like, um, the stock is set. Uh, this is not a retractable or collapsible stock. It's just a fixed there. However, I do have to say, it's still comfortable. It's not bad. Uh, there are zero rails on this thing because obviously they did not have nerf rails in the movie. There's also no Picatinny or anything like that on it. Uh, the only thing that you have is basically a groove right down that middle, and that is basically your iron sight. Um, the other change is um, on the grenade launcher, um, where the shells would eject from the Remington or the grenade launcher, which, however you want to say it, um, they actually just put a plate over there that just has the alien's um, logo on it. Uh, also, the bottom does not have anywhere, um, like anything that you would be able to push to load any kind of like a shell or a dart or anything like that. So that got rounded off and obviously they sealed the ejection port because there really is no need for an ejection port on this thing. Um, but yeah, that is, oh, and to release your, um, clip, it's just this button right here. So, uh, one last thing is there is no off switch for the LED counter. Uh, this will just naturally time out after a little while. Uh, I want to say I'm, I'm okay with it, but I'm not happy. I would have liked to have like, kind of like a switch on this, like either this little button here or two of these fake little things here or something. It would have been nice to have a actual off switch. I mean, I can understand why they did it, because none of them really had before, but since you have the LED in here, I would have preferred a off switch on that. Uh, but that's just me. Oh, also one last thing. Uh, since, again, it's solid and it doesn't really need it, the um, bolt from the Thompson that is right above here, or right actually right here where I'm pointing, the... Uh, this is non-functional and also cut down, so there is no bolt there that you can rack or anything like that. So, that's it for the aesthetics of this thing and how this works. So now, let's go over to the workbench and we'll see what's actually inside of it. Okay, what you're looking at is just... So, I was going to say Christmas Christmas came early because it was working out so beautifully. The yellow shell was coming off separately from the main blaster, so you'd be able to do a screen-accurate paint job. And, oh, life was good. Then I got to here. Hasbro. You rat bastards you glued on this orange ring at the front of it which now means i cannot take this apart without severely damaging the front of this and i'm pissed about that I am really pissed because now while trying to open everything all of my triggers and such here 
are now all misaligned. And now I have to try and figure out how to reset those without snapping this off or trying to figure out how to take this off so I can get to the internals of this. I am not happy about this. So next will either be me just closing this up for the time being and then giving you my final thoughts or I'm going to figure out how to take this stupid thing off and continue on what I was going to do and show you the internals. Oh, by the way, uh, this is obviously something from Elite 2.0 because it is that really, really ugly, like gray blue color scheme that they used. So I was mistaken on a rapid strike. So this is whatever the equivalent of an Elite 2.0 rapid strike is. So I'm going to figure this out and I will be back momentarily. Well, that's great. That's just fucking great, man. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty shit now, man. You finished. Okay, so... Call me Rabbi Tuckman because... I just nipped the tip. And, yeah, I just decided, screw it, I cut it off. Um, it... I was already starting to mar it up, trying to pop it off. Um, but yeah, I, I just decided to go with that. So there's that. But here is this, the internals of the pulse rifle. Um, my rev trigger and my actual trigger popped out of here, which is why they are missing. Uh, but up here we have the mega blaster, which just really kind of looks like a jolt or a um, hot shock, I guess, if you want to go either way on that one. Uh, but the rat, you have a small ratcheting mechanism here for the prime in and of itself, which also be careful when you are taking this apart because the grip, while it, I don't believe it is, no, it is screwed in. Uh, it's only screwed in with one washer screw up at the front here. Uh, but yeah, it did kind of get stuck on here. So um, yeah, that was a bit of a pain in the butt trying to take that off. But on the plus side now, I can just take that screw out so I don't have to worry about it getting stuck next time I open it, which is probably going to be for... Uh, oh, okay. I see how it is. So the screw is holding this in place, but the pins just go in here and that's what slide it but the pins kind of got stuck as i separated the shell so just fair warning on that um but yeah you have the barrel here uh which is a bit of a longer barrel uh which i also have to clean up a little bit because of how i had to get this thing out of here um yeah there's no like uh, safety things or anything like that. It's just the exposed, exposed flywheels. Uh, you can definitely see all the different switches in here. Like here we have the, for the um, grenade. Um, I'm safely assuming this is the one for the gun, I want to say. It's either, yeah, I think this is the gun or that could be the gun. Or no, this is actually, I think, a, no, that's a clip lock. Okay, so that's a clip lock which engages that motor, which I I could disengage. I don't know. This The wiring is something I may have to figure out later on when I actually do a mod on this because I'm looking and... Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what this one does, but it's all goes into the board up here, and I believe the board up here is what does all of the fancy electronics. So, but yeah, uh, here is the motorized gearbox for the actual firing of this. Um, but yeah, thankfully this thing does separate out into separate shells. So we'll make painting nice and easy. Um, however, having to re inlay all of the electronics, that is going to be the difficult part of it. 
Uh, but again, that is future me's problem come the spring when I decide to paint this up. Um, but yeah, I am going to finally button this stupid thing back up. Um, I'll get chronograph numbers and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this thing. Okay, so before I actually button this up, I decided, you know what, because it was also kind of giving me issues. Um, yeah, I'm just going to modify the front end of this thing uh, with the master key because, yeah, a lot of this crap is annoying because one, you had a slide lock that kept engaging when this thing was fully forward and I don't know why, so that's gone. Uh, you had a trigger lock here. Uh, so yeah, you're gone. And also, just for shits and giggles, um, yeah, they don't glue this, but yeah, you can see here the uh, plunger assembly just simply twists apart. And then I took out my air restrictor because uh, this way, you know, it'll give that little bit of a boost to my... Um, mega darts and also i tend not to dry fire things so i mean i'm not going to do that but yeah uh that's all squared away i haven't i'm not sure if i want to take that out yet or not but um it doesn't seem to be in the way of annoying me so that can stay for now because it has not displeased me yet but yeah uh took out everything else uh, also don't forget to put this piece back on and yeah so now i'm gonna button this up and get you numbers and yada yada all that stuff i just said five seconds ago okay so i finally got this thing back together it took me a little longer than i had anticipated and by the time everything was all said and done it was getting late so new day new shirt still same final thoughts though uh so let's get into those because one i still like this I'm still happy with it i'm still happy i own this i'm not upset i bought this now i say still because with what i'm about to throw down you may be surprised that i'm still you know kind of on board with this uh so first thing that really pissed me off about this was the fact that they glued that damn ring at the end of the barrel everything else with this came apart nice and simply the yellow pieces separate off of the main blaster itself the main blaster opens up beautifully nothing you know to you know nothing double-sided or anything like that except for uh the priming handle for the front gun because it was screwed in onto the inside but other than that everything else came apart fine except for that damn orange ray now as I had mentioned earlier, after trying six ways from Sunday on trying to pry it off, I could not get it done. I had marred it up way too much. I just decided to cut my losses, and I cut it off with the Dremel. Um, and this was something that, one, should not have had to have happened, because with just a little bit of, you know, ingenuity or engineering or whatever you want to call it, you could have just made that, like, that yellow, or not yellow, that orange ring, an insert like you did with the front of the grenade launcher or the mega blast or whatever you want to call it, the front gun, made it a little bit of an insert. And so this way it's a, still a solid piece, but you can open up the blaster and then it's there. Um, why they didn't do that, I don't know. I didn't build the damn thing, but you know, hindsight being 2020, it would have been a lot nicer and easier to do that. I mean, did you learn nothing from Elite 2.0 and the problems with glue, you dumbasses? But, in a way, it kind of did help out a bit. And I say that because looking at um, pictures of the actual um, movie props, the front barrels actually really didn't go out as far as they did, or at least on here. They actually go... Actually, I think it ends, like, right almost where this piece is. So, by taking that ring off, it actually helped make it a little bit more screen accurate. So, in a weird way, thanks, but at the same time, because it was just so frustrating to deal with that. But leading into my next part and frustrations, um, this wasn't a, I'm mad at an issue. This was more of an, oh, God, I don't want to have to deal with this um 
and that's the wiring because, oh boy, this thing has a lot of wiring in it. Now, you would expect wiring because it is an electronic flywheel blaster. It's obviously common sense. But whereas, like, when I worked on my Strifle, I just had to worry about wiring rev trigger to battery tray, battery tray to flywheels, you know, that very simple circuit. With this, however, you have rev trigger to battery to flywheels, and along with that, you have the LED counter. You have the automatic pusher. You have the soundboard. You have the speaker. You have the trigger switches for the soundboard. It's just, it was a lot, I, it was a little bit more than what I had expected. I mean, I should have expected it all, but also any electronic locks that are in here. So all of those things lead into just future me's problems are going to, future me is going to hate present me for not mapping all this out now. But again, that's future me's problem. So I, right now I don't care. I'll care in a couple of months when I work on this, but that's besides it. Um, but moving on, uh, one thing I wanted to point out, and while this is a bit of a stickling point for those of you who want to use this, uh, while this is a functional blaster, out of the box, it's not a very useful blaster. And just follow along with me on this one. Because, one, the front gun. Yes, the front gun works fine. You put a dart in the front here, you prime it, pull the trigger, it fires a dart. But it fires a dart, one dart. When we originally had seen this, fingers crossed and probably all hopes were going towards that, you know, maybe they followed along with the way the hobby had done it and just made it a mini magnus even if it was just a two shot that would have been nice because it's at least two shots but the fact that it's just one it's kind of like because eh. i mean you can miss one shot but if you can follow it right up with another shot it makes it a lot more useful and especially with it being screen accurate, there's no spots here for any onboard storage for any other mega darts. So, I mean, essentially, they just gave us a mega version of the long shot front gun, which kind of was like, because eh, the long shot front gun ain't that great. Um, now, moving on to the main part of the blaster, um, this is getting stock performance, which is why there is no uh, chrono readings. Uh, you are, it does work, you put batteries in it, well, fresh batteries, you pull the trigger, you hold this down, and you pull this trigger, and you do fire darts. Um, however, there's one small problem, though, and that actually comes down to this. This is the magazine that it comes with, and it's a very nice magazine. It's screen anachronistically accurate because while this does basically resemble a nerf clip magazine clipazine whatever you want to call it um it does have the foot plate that is on the actual magazines in the movie so that you can get the you know nice good slap in there um but you run into one small problem is the fact that this is a 10 round magazine and it only comes with one magazine, which, for what I paid for this, could have at least given me two. Um, but it only comes with one 10-round magazine, so you're figuring, all right, fine, if I'm using it in war, I'll have to use my other magazines. Well, here is an elite 10-round magazine. It does not work with other magazines. Now, it doesn't work with this for at least this particular one for a few reasons. One, these ridges were put onto the magazines basically as a stopgap for the actual like Nerf blasters because their magazine wells aren't that deep. 
This is like to prevent them from you pushing up too high and damaging either flywheels or a bolt sled or something to that effect. But because these ridges are so wide, it does not go past where it's originally designed to go. But because of the long magazine weld, you now have it stopping there when all of the flywheel stuff is basically right here. So you have about a good like two and a half, maybe three inches or so of you can't get that in there. So there's that. Now, there were changes made to this magazine to make it work with the design of the pulse rifle. One, you'll notice on the back that there is no magazine clip holder or, or um, clip in whatever you want to call it. The hole where basically when you put a magazine in, uh, it holds your magazine release lock or whatever the fuck, whatever you want to call it. I'm tired from extra life. Um, but you'll also notice that the ridges on this, on this uh, magazine aren't really that high, but you also have these little notches cut out, which is going to be interesting, which I'll get to in a moment. But then I realized, wait a minute, I have magazines with small ridges on them. My stampede clips, or my stampede clipazines, whatever you want to call them. Um, now, I had to modify these to actually work with my strifle, because my orange strifle, for some reason, was not working with these because of the big ridges on the back, but it's fine. I just sanded those flush, and it's fine. Now, I also noticed that I tried, I tested this before and it wasn't working, but I took off that front ridge, and I'm like, all right, let's give it a shot. It's low enough. And lo and behold, it actually goes past the ridge, which is great. However, it still doesn't go in all the way because it doesn't have that notch. Now, you're saying to yourself, well, what's the notch for? Well, the notches are so that the magazine can get past these spots in the magazine. Well, you can see the protrusion there and the little one right there. Now... Looking at them, these serve no purpose other than to make the use of other magazines incompatible with this one. Like, it gets past these with ridges fine or whatever. By rights, this should work. However, because of those ridges, I cannot get this thing past. I could sit here and just go wham! And it will go in, and it will work. However, I then can't get it back out because I can't get past, I can't get the ridge past those pieces of plastic. Like, literally, there is no utility purpose to these posts other than to make this a proprietary magazine. I mean, it is proprietary because it's, you know, it's the one that looks like the one from the movie. But it keeps you from using actual Nerf magazines with it for no reason whatsoever. And that is just extremely stupid. Now, there is, at least I heard somebody talking about online, that they're going to be making these available to purchase. Fine, whatever. That's great. However, it's still a 10-round magazine, and this is a full auto blaster. You're going to burn through 10 rounds pretty damn quick. Actually, I'll even show you how quick it is. That's how quick you go through 10 rounds. You can almost double that with this. However, you can't use these unless you heavily modify these, which I am just going to take the front ridges off of those and fine be done with it. I am not going to notch all of my 18 round magazines. I'm going in here and I'm clipping off those two pieces because they serve zero purpose other than to make everyone's life difficult. Now, while I was talking about the functionality of the blaster, besides it being a flywheel Nerf blaster, it's also a prop piece. But it's an interactive prop piece because it's really nice because it has sound effects. However, the sound effects are, they're not lackluster, but there were some things they missed the boat on. One, I love the fact that I can just pull 
this trigger all the time and always get this okay grenade launcher sound out of it. Now, I cannot say for certain if that's how the grenade launcher actually sounds in the movie. I've seen the movie plenty of times over these years. Um, I've been watching it since I was a kid. Don't judge me. Or judge me. You know what? I don't give a shit. Um, but I've been watching this movie for ages. The only time you ever see the grenade launcher getting used is at the very end of the movie when there's intense music and a bunch of explosions going off anyway. So you're really not catching what the grenade launcher sounds like. Plus, it's only used once, again, in the very end of the movie. So it's like, all right, fine, whatever. The one thing that you really want to hear is this thing firing because that's what everyone knows. Everyone knows what the pulse rifle sounds like. It sounds like this. Which is really cool, because since you only have 10 rounds, you're going to want to bump this up to the 95 and just sit around here play, playing aliens and just going all day long. Not saying that I've done that or not. You know, again, judge me, I don't care. Um, but the problem is this, though. Now, I take the magazine out. The counter goes blank. I can hold the rev trigger down and actually pull the trigger, which is great, because normally you can't do this with no magazine in here. However, it does absolutely nothing. Where is this? Now, I can put the magazine back in here. I put it right away. I can put the magazine back in there. I get my counter, which means, ooh, I can fire. However, because of the way it's designed, you need to pull the rev trigger first in order to pull the actual firing trigger. So, without holding down the rev trigger, you can't fire, which means you can't get just the sound effects. If you hold down the rev trigger, though, You hear flywheels, but you can then pull the trigger and you get all those really cool sound effects, except they're getting drowned out because of the goddamn flywheels. So, yeah, it's great that they put in the sound effects for the machine gun in here, or the pulse rifle. Except you can't hear it over the stupid flywheels. Because you have to rev the trigger. You have to hold down the rev trigger in order to use the actual thing. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, like, you know, play around and have to listen to this all the time. Just so I can kind of hear this. So... Honestly, they really missed the boat on that one. Um, last thing I just wanted to touch upon was just putting this thing back together. I had some issues with the uh, front gun going back together because of the way it's designed and the locks and all that stuff. I was just having issues with it. I just took the locks out. There's a reason why I hate them, and this proved why. Um, but also putting this, the main body back together... I noticed, I believe it's the soundboard chip, or whatever is the one that's, like, right here. It kind of bowed up a little bit. So whenever I was trying to put the shell back together, it kept catching on the shell parts. So I was having trouble getting that to close. I mean, all it is is a little bit of pusher, pressure pushing it down a bit, and the shell went together fine. But I don't want to have to keep doing that every time I open this up. So that's just something to be aware of if and when you decide to open up this thing. Um, but I just spoke about a lot of bad things. Let me go on a couple of good things. One, it's pulse rifle. This is an injected molded, almost one-to-one -one scale pulse rifle from Aliens, which is, I think, probably, collectively, everyone's favorite movie of the franchise. I mean, the first movie was absolutely great, but... Aliens is... Aliens. I mean, like, it's... I think it's the one... It's 
if not more recognizable than the original. And, you know, fight me on that if you want to. Yes. Fight! But I personally like Aliens more than the original movie. The original movie was iconic, but so was the second. Uh, it, like, ranks up there with, like, Terminator 2. Like, it's as good as the original. Um, for different reasons, though. But, anyway, I digress. Um, also, I gotta say, the packaging. The packaging was amazing. I love the packaging. The packaging is so freaking cool. And for the fact that, at least, when I got it, it actually came in a box, so that I didn't have shipping labels all over it, was great. And the detail that they went into the packaging is really nice. The detail they even went into this was really, really good. Um, you know, it's a nice, big blaster. It's not too big, you know, I... As an adult, I can wield it totally fine, but, I mean, it was also designed for adults. They didn't scale it down to be, like, super small or anything like that. The grip on this thing is really nice and comfortable. The pump grip for the front gun is really nice. Magazine insertion and removal, very easy. The fact that the LED counter works really nice, you know, and work, functions properly is also great, too. Um... So, with that being said, am I still happy with this? Of course I am. I have a goddamn pulse rifle. Um, is this perfect? Oh, dear God, no. Um, but you know what? For what I paid for this, I'm really happy with it. It beats trying to get one of the airsoft... If, if all you want is a replica... This is probably not going to be for you. You'd be better off either just buying a replica or getting one of the Airsoft replicas. Because the Airsoft replicas, you're getting something a little bit more real steel. However, you're also going to be paying a lot more money for this. This was $100 through uh, the Hasbro Limited, whatever you want to call it. Um, but if you're looking for one of the... Airsoft replicas, you're going to be paying anywhere from like three to five hundred dollars for one of those things, and it's also an airsoft replica. It's not something you can play with around your house. Um, so, I mean, like this is something that, as it is, I can basically take anywhere to play with, for the most part. Um, like if there was a Nerf event in a park, I can take this. If I want to just play around in the house, I could probably use this. Well, I'm playing in the backyard with my kids. I can do that with this. I can't do that with an airsoft replica. So, there's that. Um, so, with all of that said, like I said, is this perfect? No. Am I happy with it? For the most part, yes. Would I buy another one? If my wallet allowed me, yes, I would. Because then I would have one I would just keep in this exact config configuration and then there would be the one that I actually do up as a proper proper replica so that's actually where I'm going to leave it at because I don't know what else I can say about it I mean I'm still happy with it I still I'm going to enjoy it and I'm going to look forward to actually modding it up my only problem is going to be in the spring when I do decide to tackle this and uh, do my proper aliens prop is do I want it a, um, a service issued version or however it's referred to as the as is version or do I want the nice weathered you know movie battle accurate one um, you know it's gonna just be that one who knows maybe I'll throw a poll up and see whatever see what the community wants me to try out but and that's where we're going to leave it for this video. And as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Aliens Pulse Rifle and what your take on it is if you happen to own one. I'd love to hear everyone's comments on it because I know it's going to be a mixed bag of everything. Hopefully not as polarizing as the, Mando blast, the Mandalorian Blaster, but hopefully at least a nice discourse. And Oh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And again, thank you all for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Later. We have a piano box, don't forget.